Hello there. I can see some people jumping on. Awesome. That shows me things are working. This is great. I would love you guys to please say hello and tell me where you're calling from and where you're dialing in from. If you haven't clicked the button that tells me who you are and you just have Facebook user up there, could you please go out, click the link again and press the button where it says that I can see your name because I really, really want to see your name. So hi, Kelly. Hi, Doran. Hi. There's so many people coming on. It's so lovely to see you all from Melbourne, thinking of you guys down there in Melbourne. So it's lovely to see you all jumping on. We'll wait to see everyone jumping on and then we will get started. Gosh, it's been a mad rush for me this afternoon. We are um, fortunate enough in Queensland at the moment to be able to go camping. And so we've been camping all weekend for the long weekend. So I waltzed in the door probably about oh, two, three hours ago, and it was a <laughs> mad rush to get ready and have a shower. I haven't had a shower for two or three days and get myself ready. So wonderful to see you all there. Oh, lots of South Australia crew. Hi, Emma from Sydney, New South Wales, New South, Wales South Coast. Hi, Tanya. Oh, there's some crew from Tasmania. Anastasia, it must be late there for you in Auckland. Hello, lovely to see you. People from Brisbane, Sunny Coast, Toowoomba. Awesome. So cool to see you all jumping on. Okay, so here we are. We're kicking off the next 10 days, which I'm super, super stoked about. Um, so hello to all the Facebook crew who are watching it in Facebook. And of course, hello to everyone watching over on YouTube. So for those of you who are in different states and not in Queensland, it's pretty late for you guys. It's about nine o'clock or possibly 8.30. And so if you need to jump off, if you get tired, don't worry. There will be a replay coming out and you can get all the information and keep watching at a later date. But I'm really, really looking forward to speaking to you guys tonight. So over the next 10 days, I'm going to be sharing so much information about this awesome understanding of the gut-brain connection. So my plan really is to absolutely just like blow your mind, you know, have lots and lots of light bulb moments where you can really see what's going on with your health and what's going on with your mental health. So I really want you to be able to understand you know, why, you know, are you feeling anxious or, you know, feeling depressed, racing thoughts, you know, a lot of um, OCD and for our kids out there, possibly spectrum traits, ODD, you know, all of these issues that we're facing with regards to mental health. I really, really, really can't wait for you to join the dots after this workshop and get an understanding of, wow, this is why this is happening for me. And then, of course, in live number three, for you to be able to see that there are some incredible, simple, actionable steps that you can take to be able to turn this around. Because I really want you guys to feel, you know, joyful and resilient and to be able to turn those you know, anxious, fearful thoughts around into positive action and be able to achieve your dreams and your goals and all those sorts of things. So I'm just so stoked that I can share this all with you. There's more people jumping on. Penelope's from Cape Town. Hi, Penelope. Sandra from Perth. Oh, it's just lovely to see you all in there. So exciting. Hello, Kylie. Lovely to see you from Melbourne. Okay, so tonight... It's going to be all about the 101 of this gut-brain axis. So going to get a bit nerdy. I've even got some images to show you so we can really unpack it and so you can understand it. So more the 101. Now, the second live is going to be more about what's going on for you, your gut microbiome, and where did it go wrong? What happened to get you, you, know, you into that situation? And then live number three is the awesome actionable steps. So we're going to really unpack it tonight. Now, if I'm always looking down, I've got my notes here. So stick with me. So I'm going to be able to look at my notes and explain it all. 
Now, for those of you who don't know me, there's lots of new crew jumping on. Um, I won't delve into the big detail of how did I end up running a company such as Cultured Wellness and being so passionate about education in the gut microbiome space. I won't delve into that in detail now, but please, please have a look at there's a beautiful video in the Facebook group that talks about how Cultured Wellness started. And it really was about my own gut health issues and my son's gut health issues. So check that out. And then for an expanded version of that, I have an awesome podcast called Culturing Curiosity. And that in that podcast, in episode number one, I really dive into what happened to myself and my family and how did cultured wellness started and it started and how did I get here today? So please go and listen to those if you are new to cultured wellness and new to this awesome community. So you can get a bit of a background understanding about, um, you know, why I'm so passionate about you know being able to share this information and education with you. Okay, so let's let's dive into it. Now, the other reason why I wanted to do a workshop at the moment on our mental health and anxiety and depression and all sorts of mental health issues is because of where we're at at the moment. It's obviously the massive elephant in the room. Our resilience and our mental health currently is being absolutely stretched. There is so much going on and we need tools in our toolkit We need to be resilient. We need to make actionable steps to know what to do. And so it was very, very important that this education series was going to support you with that. So previous education series, we've done about hormones and done a lot about the gut microbiome and um, autoimmune conditions, all sorts of different connections. But this one is so poignant for what's going on at the moment. So it's very good to be able to share that with you. Okay, so you guys are all over it. You can see that there's um, places to put comments there. So if you have a question, please put, put it up at any time. Now, I have um, the Culture Wellness crew in here, so they will, if I can't answer it, they certainly will answer it for you. And they will either be able to send a link or be able to give you an answer, or they'll let me know, this is a question, make sure that um, you answer it. So please make the most of this, um, you know, the ability to be able to ask questions, because that's so cool about it being live. Now, someone's just put up their hello from Harvey Bay in Queensland. Well, I was just in Harvey Bay for the weekend. So, and can you believe that the water park was closed and my kids were devastated and it was about 35 degrees today and we could have done with that water park. So, hello, Harvey Bay. Okay, so let's get started. What actually is the gut microbiome and what is the gut microbiota? So the gut microbiome is a collection, obviously, within our GI tract, and it houses bacteria, viruses, and also fungi. And it has trillions and trillions and trillions of these microorganisms that literally make up who we are. They make up how we think, how we behave. They support our immune system. They help us digest. They make up so much of who we are. And so understanding this bacterial community community that we have is of utmost importance when we're looking at optimal health. So our gut microbiome influences our metabolic and immune health. So it influences if we have diabetes. It influences if we are constantly hungry or if we feel satiated and settled and calm. It influences if our immune system is really disorganized and we get sick all the time and we can't fight things off. And it also influences if we, um, you know, are, are going to maybe suffer from autoimmune conditions or any other types of chronic diseases. Our immune system and our gut microbiome, it really does impact our brain development. So there's incredible research that shows us that what goes on 
in our gut microbiome when we're first born and the diversity of that gut microbiome when we're first born and in our infancy plays out in how resilient we are as adults and how much we are prone to being able to manage stress and being able to be resilient as an adult. So it's incredible information that right at the get-go, our microbiome is really influencing who we are, our moods, and our personality. So we really want to get it right from the start. But it's okay if it wasn't right from the start because we know what to do to turn it around. So we know so much about that brain development. We also know that our gut microbiome influences neurogenesis, which is how our um, beautiful brain cells, how they reform and they how they multiply. And so it says a lot about our brain function and our cognitive function. And also our gut microbiome and all of the beautiful microbes that live within our gut, they interact with our nervous system. And that is what we're going to really delve into tonight because a lot of people, you know, it's a new concept, this whole gut-brain axis. And so I really want to be able to explain that to you. So the gut-brain connection is biodirectional. So that means there's a top-down approach. So our brain can impact our gut and there's a bottom-up approach. So our gut can impact our brain. So this is really cool. This is all very exciting and very new understanding. So, of course, it all started with some, you know, studies into some mice. There's always, <laughs> there's always a study that involves these dear poor little mice. And what they did was they took out beneficial bacteria out of the mice microbiome and then they saw an increase in stress and an increase in anxiety. And so they tested, you know, the response of the mice once they'd taken out all of the beneficial bacteria in their microbiome. So this is really cool. And then once they saw that stress response, then they replaced bifidobacteria and certain microbes back into the gut. And then they saw a reduction in anxiety and that stress behavior and their mood and behavior was restored as it was beforehand. So this is really big stuff, really, really big stuff. And of course, they've extrapolated this out and I'll go into some of this research into humans as well. But it tells us a lot about that interaction from this beautiful microbes that we have in our gut and our mood and who we are. There's still people jumping on. Hello, everyone. So cool to see you. Okay, so the gut-brain axis is this communication between the central nervous system and it links all the cognitive centers in our brain and links it to our gut. So it's this two-way street. Now, this involves a lot. So we're gonna look from the top down to start with. Now, I'm not gonna to get too techy, but this is the 101. And so I wanna lay it out for you. So then when we go into live two and live three, you know why we're doing this. So this bi-directional communication, now I'm going to bring up a pretty cool little um, image for you here. Now, can you guys see this? Please just give me a thumbs up if you can see this because this is a really important image. So when we're looking from the top down, this is what's happening and the connection between, between these two from our nervous system and what's happening from our brain. So that central nervous system coming out of our brain. And then we have these other nervous system responses. Okay, you guys can see it. If it's a bit too small, so if you're watching it on your phone or if you're watching it on an iPad or so forth, I'll make sure that I post this in the Facebook group for you guys so you can really unpack this and look at it, all right? So if it's too small, bear with me and we'll put it up for you. But underneath that central nervous system, we have the autonomic nervous system. And this is the big gun here that I really want to talk about. So you see here this autonomic system, nervous system, we have two options. We can go into the sympathetic nervous system. And this is the state of fight or flight. It's that 
excitatory state. It's when our heart rate goes up. It's when we get a lot of, you know, cortisol happening. Our body starts to respond to a stress response and things start happening. Now, this is really cool if you want to run away from a tiger, if you want to go out and sing in front of a big group of people, or if you're going out to play a grand final. So, we, you know, we, we love a bit of our, you know, nervous, sympathetic nervous system response. We want that fight or flight. We don't want it all the time. This autonomic nervous system underneath this is the parasympathetic nervous system. And the parasympathetic nervous system is our rest and digest mode. And this is where we have that smooth muscle. So we don't get tight, ouchy, sore back, tight neck. Everything just feels like it's falling apart. Our heart, so our cardiac um, heart is nice and settled. Our heart rate drops. We're feeling really calm. And all of our endocrine glands, for example, our thyroid, everything is feeling really, really supported. And then off to the side here, we've got our enteric nervous system. And this guy is responsible for what happens in our digestive system. And so this is big. And this is where I really want to focus on as well, because if our enteric nervous system is feeling stressed out, if the wrong signals are being sent to that enteric nervous system, then this pathway that goes up to the brain, it's going to be sending the wrong messages. It's going to be sending messages of inflammation, messages of stress, and all the wrong messages. So we want to make sure that our nervous system on all these layers are, are really, really balanced and not in that fight or flight response. So with regards to this connection of this nervous system that's happening here, what we need to look at is also how it feeds back up to the brain. So we'll get into that in a minute. But it feeds back up into the brain in what's called this HPA axis. So this HPA axis is basically, it tells us, if our body is in that fight or flight response and if we're in a stressed response or it sends the signal back that we're fine. And so we really want to make sure that this nervous system is balanced and we want to be able to coordinate that stress response because we have environmental stresses and we can develop inflammatory responses and we can activate all sorts of hormone and cortisol responses. Okay, so I just want to make it really, really clear from here that this is from the brain down. So this is a top down response. Hey there, someone's just said they're like, that's all cool because we have, uh, we're recording this, so no problems. So the nervous system, this beautiful collection of these nervous systems are so important because they are responsible for our intelligence, our learning, and our memory. So they control our brain and they control how we feel. They control our movement. They control our basic bodily functions. So our heart rate, digestion, sweating, shivering, all of those things that just happen. And they also respond to anything that is happening around us. They also respond to a huge release of adrenaline if there's an emergency situation. And also they help to work out our senses. So for example, our sight, hearing, touch, smell, this is all controlled by this nervous system. So it's very, very cool. Yes, Paula, you can go back and watch it later. Okay, so just to double check, this whole nervous system and especially this autonomic nervous system here is heart rate, digestion, respiratory, all of our fight or flight response, everything is happening there. So it's pretty important that we know what's going on with this digestive system. Okay, so I want to give you a really, really good example of how there's a top-down approach. So we can, with our brain, we can have the perception 
that we are under stress and then it can trigger off that parasitic nervous system response. And that can impact what's going on in our gut. And so a couple of examples are, you know, most of us have our phones pinging at us. A lot of us are eating foods that aren't right for our bodies or we can't digest them. Digest them. A lot of us have a lot of, um, you know, whether it be relationships, whether it be um, staying up too late, not having enough sleep, um, not feeling settled with our goals or where we're going in life or our relationships. And we can see this as a perceived threat. So this perceived threat can be every day, just stress every single day, and it compounds. And so we're constantly in this parasympathetic nervous system response. But the other times is we can have big overt situations that happen. So some of you may or may not know, if you're new to culture wellness, you won't know this, but I was in the Boxing Day tsunami. So the 2004 Boxing Day tsunami. And I was on a beautiful little island called Koh Phi Phi in Thailand. Now, it was a horrible situation. And when the first wave came over, I didn't know what was going on. No, no one knew what was happening. And most of the island was completely taken out by this enormous wave. And so my whole nervous system went into complete overdrive. My heart rate went up all of the cortisol and all and you know went to my big big muscles when your heart rate goes up and when you go into fight or flight you release a whole lot of insulin like your um, body just releases insulin so then you can run away you can jump and for me you know i jumped out of a window and jumped onto a roof and then held on to a tree and you know in that situation you want all of this cortisol to go up. You want to be able to get those muscles going and you want to be able to run away from the this, this stressful situation. Now, unfortunately for me, being out there in this really stressful situation was that it just kept going and going and going. So there was more waves and there was also a situation of um, we didn't know what was happening and we were stuck on that island for um, you know, two or three days. And so it was this constant perceived threat. And so during that time, all of my, you know, my gut just completely fell apart. I had chronic issues with motility. So once all, you know, I was sort of safe, then, you know, all I wanted to do was empty my bowels. I had a lot of trouble, you know, managing my heart rate. I couldn't sleep for days. And my nervous system was in overdrive. I was very much on high alert all the time. And that continued for quite some time coming back to Australia. And so when I came back to Australia, I was still in that fight or flight response and my body couldn't get out of that fight or flight response. And so I constantly had gut issues. I was constantly elevated all the time. I couldn't think. And I just couldn't, you know, manage day-to-day -day life. And so it was a classic example of this ongoing situation where my nervous system was triggered and it was affecting my gut. So it was a very top-down approach of this perception that I wasn't safe and then it was impacting the rest of my body. So my brain was working out of this fear state, which is your amygdala state in your brain, and it couldn't switch off. Now, many, many, many people that have uh, gut issues like irritable bowel, they might have Crohn's, they might have um, you know, chronic constipation, chronic diarrhea. It often starts from a top-down approach of a big stressful situation. Um, it might have you know, been maybe a car accident, it might have been someone passing away, for a lot of our clients that we work with, sometimes we see it even goes back to, you know, parents being divorced when they were a child. There are many situations and stressful, traumatic situations that start this process happening. And then you have 
these gut issues or you have these anxiety issues and you have them for 20 years and we often don't join the dots because it's been so long that we've been dealing with those situations. So this top-down approach can happen all the time. And what I see, which is really unfortunate at the moment as well, is that we are seeing people that have got little, um, I was speaking to a culture wellness team member today, Kylie, and we were calling them little mini brain tsunamis. So our brain is constantly on that high alert thinking a tsunami is coming at any moment. And we are stuck in that fear state. And every day we're triggered. And so every day we can't get out of this sympathetic nervous system, sorry, out of this sympathetic nervous system response. And so we're constantly feeling elevated. So when we have this fear state and the brain perceives stress, whatever it is, our, as I said, our gut motility goes down. So we either get diarrhea or constipation. We can't secrete digestive enzymes. We can't secrete stomach acids and we can't digest our food properly. So suddenly when our food isn't digested, then we aren't extrapolating the nutrients that we need and we start to become deprived of our nutrients. I'm just going to put this way for a little bit so you can see me for a bit before I put my next one up. We also, when we have this perceived threat in our brain and our nervous system is sending the wrong messages to our body, then our gut becomes leaky or permeable. And so we start to get an inflamed gut, it starts to get leaky, and we st start to trigger off all of these immune responses. So suddenly from a very stressful situation, our gut starts to break down. And then five years later, you end up with an autoimmune condition, or you end up with psoriasis or eczema, or you end up with chronic fatigue, or a whole host of things, diabetes, thyroid conditions. But it all started from this top-down approach. And so also we, our gut doesn't secrete, well, our body doesn't secrete the appropriate hormones. So we're not secreting the appropriate um, stress reduction hormones or we're secreting the wrong cortisol hormones. And so it all becomes out of balance. And so what's happening here is, once again, that enteric nervous system, which is this incredible nervous system that kind of lines the gut, this enteric nervous system sits separately. I'll bring it back up again because I want to make sure you guys see it. This in, oh, whoa, what's going on? So this enteric nervous system here that sits separately, this guy is so important because the enteric nervous system is there and it's got all these neurons in there sensing, are we stressed? Are we okay? Are we activating immune response? What's happening? And then it's constantly sending messages back to the brain. And I'll get into those kind of messages and communication that it's sending back to the brain. So it's a really important thing to not only focus on this, sympath or this um, sympathetic and parasympathetic or rest and digest or fight and flight, but we also need to remember this ENS, the enteric nervous system, and obviously our autonomic nervous system. So I just want to show you this other one while I'm at it because I love a good diagram. This one's pretty small too, guys, but we will blow it up on the Facebook group so you can see it. But how's this? How cool is this? The human nervous system. So when we're in this sympathetic nervous system, which is this alert stressed response this really really stressed response we have all these air, all these issues that go on with our body and when we're in that parasympathetic nervous system response we um sorry i've got it around the wrong way we have um we either inhibit or we uh, relax so this is a really really cool one so we can um inhibit activity in the intestines we can um, have issues with airways. We can see that saliva is released. We can see the dilated pupils or the constricted pupils. It, you can see here from the brain what it can do when you're in these two nervous system responses. 
for our whole body. So for any of you out there who receive chiropractic care, this is um, truly amazing because obviously chiropractic care is all about the nervous system and switching the nervous system off and getting you into that rest and digest mode. So as it says here, you can stimulate your activity in your stomach. You can keep that heart rate low. You can get that digestive, you know, fire going in your small intestine. You can, you know, promote that excretion and motility, make sure all of those things happen. So it's very, very, very cool. Okay. And so then we have that enteric nervous system that is working within the gut, sending those messages back. So it's amazing how that works. So with regards to um, that nervous system, that top-down approach, it's really interesting for you guys to sit back and reflect. Was there a stressful point in my life? And I think someone put up there, they had a bad accident 12 years ago. One side of your face went numb due to nerve damage. Oh, my gosh. Will this have effect on my gut? So, yes, it will, absolutely, because, a, you know, a car accident is a really stressful response. And so we need to retrain our body and our nervous system to go back into that settled state. So lots and lots of things can impact us. So have a think about, is it going on and did it start from a stressful response or in fact, is my daily life so stressful that it's sending messages to my gut? Okay, so this is where it gets really interesting and really, really cool because we also know that this gut-brain axis is multidirectional. So we know that what goes in our gut can impact our brain. And so we know that the bacteria in our gut and the metabolites from the bacteria in our gut can influence, number one, the HPA axis. Now, the HPA axis is this just incredible axis that is the different receptors in our brain, so the limbic system, which is in our emotional center of the brain, the amygdala, which is the fear center in our brain, and the um, hypothalamus, which is the center in our brain that is connected with our adrenals and either calms our adrenals down and puts us into the appropriate state or it you know brings up this stress response and so our gut bacteria can send signals to be on high alert for that brain or our gut bacteria can send awesome signals like um, working with our serotonin to send signals of joy, signals of happiness, and to rest our body and our brain into feeling like we are not in a fear state. So our gut bacteria also is responsible for the secretion of short-chain fatty acids. Now, I'm going to bang on about short-chain fatty acids a lot over these 10 days because they're so cool when they do so much stuff. But short chain fatty acids are the metabolites that are released from the bacteria in our gut. And I'll go into that in live number two a little bit more. But these short chain fatty acids, they're like butyrate is a big one that you may have heard of before. But those short chain fatty acids are the precursors for serotonin, for dopamine, for GABA, like these short chain fatty acids that come from our gut are really the foundations and the building blocks to be able to make our neurotransmitters, which are our happy brain chemicals. So we want as many short chain fatty acids going on in our gut as possible because they are creating these happy, feel good neurotransmitters that balance our mood and make us feel amazing. We also know that our gut bacteria impact how our um, the wall of the gut and if it's permeable, and also our gut bacteria impacts the blood-brain barrier, which um, is basically the connection of the um, central nervous system into our brain. 
And so our gut bacteria ensures that it's nice and solid and nice and strong and it doesn't become leaky. All right, so our microbes can do incredible things, absolutely incredible things. So the first thing that I want to talk about is the fact that our microbes, like I said, can make and help us to create dopamine. So dopamine is our reward and motivation, you know, behavior. It's the neurotransmitter that gets us up off the couch. It is the um, neurotransmitter that we think, you know, I'm going to, I've got an idea. I'm going to set a goal and I'm going to get up and I'm going to go for it. And I'm going to stay focused to achieve that goal. Now, someone without a lot of dopamine, dopamine, you know, they have the sort of circulating, ruminating thoughts. They don't have the motivation to get up off the couch. They don't have the motivation to go out for a walk, you know, to start to exercise or to start a diet that they know is going to serve them. So, you know, without dopamine, it is really hard, really, really hard to be able to, you know, do all of the things that you know are going to support your health and well-being, to be able to put into action steps um, anything from making great friendships to looking after your finances to being able to clean out the cupboard and do the washing and clean the kitchen, all those sorts of things. Like life is really hard if your body does not make dopamine. And so that's why I called the next live that's coming up, It's Not You, It's Your Bugs. Because I think it's terrible that people are constantly feeling like it's their personality or they're just lazy or they just can't be bothered. And it's not actually about that. It's about the fact that their gut isn't working for them to support that motivation and getting up and getting going. Now, dopamine that is made from our gut also helps with feeling alert, feeling having that state of arousal. It supports behavior and cognition, memory, learning, and attention. Now, someone's written there, I don't think I make dopamine. I know. So I've certainly had lots of periods in my life where I'm definitely not making any dopamine at all. I'm just going to stop there for a minute because someone said here, is this reversible if it started from a stressful response? So yes, absolutely it is. So all the things that I'm talking about today or tonight and in the rest of this workshop, we I've got all the actionable tools that you need and I've got all the steps that you can, you can turn all these things around. So it is really cool that we're at this point in time with our knowledge, understanding, and we know what to implement to turn these things around. So yes, you can do it. You can absolutely do it. Okay. So um, another person there said, so stress can cause leaky gut syndrome. Yes, absolutely it can. So we know now from the research that within a perceived stress response, so when our brain perceives a stress response and that doesn't mean it actually is one it's when our brain perceives that we're stressed that can be an email that can be you know someone just not being very nice to you if we perceive that stress response the research shows that within two hours it can alter the environment in our gut and it can produce inflammation and it can be able to um you know alter the pH, the inflammation, and it can change the diversity in the gut within two hours. That is amazing. So yes, a long-term stress or perceived stress can definitely alter and the gut microbiome and cause leaky gut. Okay. And yes, someone has said there, you think you make too much dopamine. And yes, that is true too. And I can get into that in a minute. Alrighty, so if you have memory issues, if you feel like you can't even remember where your keys are, if you're constantly worried about your cognition, it's like I, like I just feel stupid these days, then we need to look at your gut microbiome. So you can't blame baby brain, you can't blame 
I'm just super stressed. You can't blame the fact that, oh, you know, I'm 50, 60, 70, I'm just getting old. You can't blame any of those things. We know how the body works and we know what mechanisms support these functions and we can do something about it, which is really, really cool. Okay, so another neurotransmitter that we talk a lot about when it comes to mental health is serotonin. Now, serotonin, we hear about it a lot because it is even used in a lot of antidepressants as a support for the brain to make to get that feel-good chemicals going. So t- serotonin is a very, very important neurotransmitter and it helps in numerous psychological processes. It also helps in a lot of functions in the body. So this is really interesting to me. I thought serotonin was literally you just feel happy and that was about all it did. But no, serotonin actually smooths out our gut function. So it supports and provides a smooth peristilic action. So for all of you out there listening that are struggling to feel resilient and joyful, feeling really anxious, I bet a lot of you have either got chronic constipation or possibly extreme diarrhea. And a lot of that has got to do with the lack of serotonin from your gut and the fact that that motility and that peristilic action is very disorganized because there's not enough serotonin. We know that the serotonin helps with brain function. So once again, it helps with neurogenesis. It helps to um, promote memory again. And we also know that it helps, oh, sorry, there we are. And we also know that it does promote joy. It promotes happiness and it makes us feel good. So serotonin is another big gun, another neurotransmitter. But what is not talked about is that serotonin starts from being made in the gut. So these short chain fatty acids that we've talked about, um, they release a metabolite and this metabolite makes tryptophan. And tryptophan is really cool because it is the precursor for these for our serotonin and 90 to 95 percent of that serotonin that's made actually resides in the cells in the lining of our gut so no wonder our joy and happiness totally relies on gut function so when you know if our gut is inflamed then our brain will be anxious. It's really, really clear, really clear. And so, you know, we want to make sure that we look is, do we have a bottom up issue going on here? So like, you know, for me being in the tsunami and being in an extremely stressful, horrible environment and that went on and on and on for the actual acute stress for days being stranded on that island and then for years afterwards I had this extreme stress response that impacted my gut there's also the bottom-up issue and so many of you may have had these ones before so I've had many 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 times of having a bottom 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 up to the brain issue Um, I have been very fortunate to travel a lot and I have lived in a lot of cool countries and different different countries. And, you know, I remember so many situations of, um, you know, just having extreme, you know, tummy bugs. And, you know, I remember once I um, went to, got to Kathmandu and we were going to, you know, climb up to Everest Base Camp and, and do some mountaineering around that area. So we arrived in Kathmandu and I was so excited and we were going to fly in a helicopter the next day up to Lukla. So if any of you know the Everest region, you'll know Lukla is like this airport that's kind of stuck into the side of a mountain and it's really full on, really, really high up in the mountains altitude wise. And so I, you know, the night before we were about to leave on this helicopter, it was all happening. It was coming out of 
both ends for me vomiting and diarrhea and I just it was horrible I couldn't hold water down and I'm sure you've all been in this situation and then I remembered and I was like what did I do that for I went on an overnight train from India into Kathmandu and I was so tired that I got my toothbrush you know on the train and I put it the toothbrush under the water on the train and then brush my teeth now I know better than that like I know better than that and I was tired and I didn't think and of course I caught something something really bad and so I had to get on yeah someone knows that airport um and so this was when I was 19 that I went up to that airport and so I think it was 1996 so this is way back when um, the airport's probably just as bad now. Hopefully it's improved a little bit. But we were in this Russian helicopter and I we had to get on this helicopter to get up there. And so the next morning we just sort of pulled it together. I was still vomiting into a bag getting onto the helicopter. And I got up there and just for the next two or three days I, I was really flattened by this bug that I had caught. And then I just had such low mood and it was probably the first time that I'd experienced such low mood and um, you know I was feeling anxious I just couldn't couldn't feel happy I was in like just the most beautiful place like you know I could look through and see all of the mountains that I was going to climb and I had worked and saved and trained so hard to go mountaineering in this space and I just it wasn't happy, felt terrible. And I had many, many situations where I'd caught a really horrible bug and then it severely impacted my mood and my motivation and all of those sorts of things. And so that's a that's a time where it's a, you know, a gut to the brain. And it, you know, because of that tummy bug, it had altered my brain and my neuro, I wasn't making any neurotransmitters and I wasn't feeling joy and I wasn't feeling happy. And then, of course, if it's not sorted out, if you don't rebalance your gut, if you don't bring that gut back into homeostasis and get rid of, you know, this big overt kind of infection, and if you didn't, you know, if, if that wasn't fixed, this is where long-term mental health issues start. And once again, I, it makes me really cross when people start to feel anxious and they start to have low mood, they start to feel overwhelmed, have the racing thoughts. And, you know, especially for our younger kids, start to, you know, have, you know, ASD and we start to see OCD, those sorts of things. It makes me so mad that, People are taken off to, um, you know, sort of be assessed and there's no consideration for what's going on in the gut. There's no, you know, examination of, you know, have you had any gut issues? Have you caught a bug? Have you had a stressful response? There's no investigation at all into how the nervous system is behaving. There's no inve investigation into what's going on in the gut microbiome and what really makes me mad is then people are put on medication such as antidepressants and um, that's the end of it. There's no further investigation. Now, these things can be turned around and we can find that state of joy and happiness again once our gut is in balance and once we've addressed that, you know, state of high alert of that nervous system response. And so I just find it um, really disappointing, which is why I'm so keen to talk to you all tonight, um, because there's more that we can do and we shouldn't just sort of like, oh, well, this is this is our lot in life. Okay, so I got a little bit sidetracked there. So let's get back to it. So these short chain um, fatty acids, these metabolites, they signal that tryptophan, which is our serotonin, but they also signal and support immune function and also that serotonin. So very, very important to discuss those short chain fatty acids. And I'll go into that in the next talk about, about our gut, what we need to eat, what we need to do, and how we can create those short chain fatty acids. 
Now, another really, really cool thing that our gut makes, so our microbes in our gut that they make, is this awesome neurotransmitter called GABA. Now, GABA is amazing because it inhibits our nervous system, which means that it turns it off. You know, if our nervous system is in a state of stress or a fight or flight response or it's feeling stressed out, GABA comes along and supports us to calm the farm. So we have our excitatory glutamate, which gets us up, gets us going. We want the glutamate and we want that excitatory get firing. But then we want the GABA to kick in to go, you know what? It's time to chill out. It's time to have a rest. It's time to calm down and it's time to feel centered and grounded. And so when someone has low GABA, we see behavior disorders. So once again, we see this a lot in kids with ADHD, ADD. We see, you know, it in adults that just have insomnia, have major sleep issues. We also see low GABA in people that have got chronic pain. So really chronic, unexplained pain that just seems to go on and on. GABA is really low in those situations. We also see low GABA in that, once again, that intestinal motility. So either constipation or extreme sort of diarrhea with a really fast transit time. So the GABA is not inhibiting that nervous system. And so it's disorganized again. It's not working effectively. So GABA, when there's low GABA, we also see that there's no, you know, gastric emptying and acid, you know, the beautiful stomach acid that we need. There's not that acid secretion. And so we love GABA. We want GABA and we want our gut to make GABA. All right. So someone said they would love to know more about GABA and supplements. Have taken and makes me feel weird. Um, I'm allergic to MSG connection, maybe. I'm scared to take, although recommended. Okay, so the end game is we want our gut to be making the GABA, so not um, having to take supplements. But sometimes we need to if uh, our body is in that really highly alarmed state whilst we rebalance the gut and get our gut to a point that can make it. So we can sometimes use it. There's no real connection with, or there's no connection with MSG and GABA. If it made you feel weird, here's an interesting thing for you. If you flip off and by use, by taking GABA, GABA will flip off you into out of that fight or flight mode and it will put you into that rest and digest mode. Now, the minute you go into that rest and digest mode, your immune system starts to fire up and go, okay, I'm here. What do I need to do? Your stomach and your digestive system starts working. Your detoxification pathways start working. Your thyroid starts working. Everything starts working and your body goes about doing some pretty awesome cleanup. And so that if you've been in a state of alarm for a day, three days, three years, 30 years, that's a big change for your body. And your body finds it really difficult to be out of that stress response. Your body wants, because it's been so long being stressed out, feels weird in a state of rest and digest. So this is the classic, you go on a holiday, you rest, you put the bikinis on and you go and like, you know, tan by the pool and you, you like read a book and you're like, I'm just going to chill out. It's been so difficult. I'm going to have a restful time. And then suddenly you get sick, you get tired, you want to sleep all the time. And that is because your nervous system has finally been inhibited and settled down and all the other functions in your body start working. And we want that. But in today's environment where we're supposed, when we're on the go with the hamster wheel kind of stuff happening, um, we don't feel comfortable being in rest and digest. And we're not, our cortisol levels aren't well up. We're not being triggered all the time to be in that, you know, real state of alarm response. And so, you know, it is when people say I feel weird on GABA and all of those kinds of things, it's more about your body is finally working and doing what it needs to do. But you need 
guidance for that and you need support around that and um you know that's what we do at culture wellness like our programs and all of our practitioners and team that that's how we support people is to get back to that homeostasis safely and confidently okay um Debbie says, my daughter with ASD stopped eating diverse range of foods at about around three years old and started spitting all her food out. Life became quite difficult from there. Yes, she is 15 years old now. Absolutely. So at three, your beautiful daughter may have caught a tummy bug. Uh, it's really common to get, um, you know, a tummy bug or get a dysbiotic gut. And then there's a lot of food refusal, a lot of limited foods. And we know for ASD children, they have an overgrowth of pathogens like Clostridium that stimulate um, all sorts of neurotransmitting behavior in the brain and alter the brain cognition capacity, learning, memory, socialization. And so I highly, highly recommend that you get her gut tested and see what's going on because it would still be a problem now if it hasn't been dealt with. Um, okay, so oh, you've been on chronic high alert for decades. Yes, like I see this all the time. And then people start to label themselves as anxious and, oh, I'm just, I'm just a bit OCD, I'm just anxious. And they, you know, it, that's just the label. It's like, well, you don't need to be like that. Okay, so I'm going to talk about testing for GABA and I'm also going to talk about how do we promote GABA in the next two lives. So tonight's a bit of that 101, making sure that you guys get the connection. All right, I have another awesome, cool slide for you. So hang tight while I, oh, while I get this going. Once again, I know it's a bit small and I'm sorry, but I'll put it up and text may, may have put all of these up in the Facebook group anyway soon, but we'll get this up here. But can you see at the bottom here, this is all the little microbes down here. So this is our gut microbiome down the bottom here. This is the gut lining, the gut wall, and this is where the enteric nervous system hangs out and does all that sensing, that neuron sensing to let us know what's going on. And from here, our, our gut microbiome produces all these incredible metabolites that do such wonderful things. So we've already talked about number nine here, which is the microbes in our gut produce these short chain fatty acids. And as it says here, it decreases things like stroke, anxiety, depression, prevention of autism, and even things like multiple sclerosis. We were talking here about how number 10, how the short chain fatty acids produce tryptophan and then once again, support um, decreasing neurological disease and anxiety again. So when I was talking about that HPA axis, which is those signals to the brain, the hypothalamus, the amygdala and the hippocampus, this area here, we can see that this decreases anxiety, increases social behavior, improvement of memory and learning. We also can see that it, with that hippocampus in the brain, that helps with that neurogenesis, memory, learning and social behavior. We also can see that things like GABA, which is this number four here, our gut producing this GABA, we're decreasing that pain response, that visceral pain response. We can see a regulation of our blood pressure, diabetes prevention, and improvement in depression. We can also see through those beautiful little microbes and what they do inside our gut, these short chain fatty acids, remember I said butyrate, and how cool that is for satiety and decreasing this significant appetite and eating for the sake of eating and being stressed when we eat. We can also see this um, number one here, which once again drives up this galanin that drives up into that HPA axis. So that adrenals, the cortisol, this big stress response that goes on in our brain. 
and that regulates our stress and anxiety. So this, I think someone's already said, like, how cool <laughs> are these pictures? Because I, I'm sure now you guys can see that it's all interconnected. And this is all being driven from the brain down through that nervous system response and from the gut up and those microbes that are creating it. So it, you know, it shouldn't, it shouldn't be this kind of unknown thing now. Why do I feel like this today? It makes sense. If you've got bloating, if you've got diarrhea, if you've got constipation, if you've got food in your stools, if you have got rashes on your body, if you've got straining, you've incomplete evacuation, so you don't feel like you can, you know, get everything out when you go to the toilet. If you've got all those things going on, you're going to have brain issues. You're going to have mental health and cognitive issues and vice versa. We're going to be sending the wrong signals downstream. So I hope that really, really helps. It's so cool. And yes, we can make so many changes to this. Now, the other thing that I wanted to talk about as well is that we know that there's some really cool research out there about not only, you know, if we've got gut disorders and if we've got autoimmune conditions and so forth, that we need to target the gut. So we know this now in the literature. The exciting space now is that we know that if there are neurological issues going on, such as anxiety and depression, any mental health issues, we know that we need to target the gut because that is what's creating that upstream effect. Now, next live, I'm going to go into a lot of detail about, um, you know, when it goes wrong. So I talked a little bit and gave some examples tonight about things that can go wrong. For example, a stress response or, you know, you can get a gut bug. So things can go wrong and it can break down that um, communication system. So I'm going to talk about that more in the next live about, you um, how to what's going on in that microbiome how do we fix it what do we eat what do we do to be able to support recreating a robust gut but i wanted to show you this last little diagram because you guys are loving the diagrams because this is it i've hopefully built you guys up to a really awesome understanding of everything that need that needs to be in place for balance and joyful resilience. So here we go. On this side, on the left-hand side, and um, Tex, can you just nod? Can you see the cursor when I do this? You can just nod and let me know. When I move the cursor around, you can't. Okay. So on the left-hand side, you guys will see the enteric nervous system there, and that's that nervous system that wraps around the gut wall and gives us that sensing and so we can see that we've got, by using prebiotics, probiotics, and the two of those together are called psychobiotics now. That's a sort of a new term that's come out. And we know those short chain fatty acids there, as you can see, are producing GABA and producing tryptophan, all these different short chain fatty acids. And it should release anti-inflammatory responses it should go up to the brain and produce a wonderful response. But as you can see there, if there's stress, then the hypothalamus becomes stressed, the pituitary gland becomes stressed, and the adrenal gland becomes stressed. So that's that HPA axis coming down here on the right-hand side. And then suddenly we get these stress responses. And look at what happens here. We're getting a leaky gut. And so the wrong molecules are coming through into, um, the, into the body. We're starting to see undigested food. We see pro-inflammatory cytokines, which are really inflammatory responses. And then we see bacteria moving around the body that shouldn't be where they should be. And we also can see that it's sending the wrong signal to the brain. So this is on the left-hand side, a really cool example of it going really well. 
<laughs> and on the right hand side, a really cool example of it not going so well. So that's, um, you know, hopefully it gives you that final, final picture of building up from where we start from um, our understanding. So I'll just hide that now so I can bring myself up. Beautiful. So I hope you like those diagrams. So um, we will pop them up in the Facebook group. Um, and someone's just asked there if they're in a PDF to print. We can look into that and see if we can um, support you with some handouts or some printables because, um, you know, all of us might have a, a loved one that we want to share this with or be able to just go over it again. And so it's really nice to have those printables because it brings us back to being grounded that it's it's not us. There's something going on there. Okay, so when it comes to this gut-brain multi-directional connection, the big thing that I want you guys to remember as we move through this 10-day workshop is that, yes, you can make changes. So the biggest things that we know that can make changes is, number one, eating fermented foods. So we know that fermented foods uh, create the right environment in our gut that then creates those short chain fatty acids. So, you know, that's why, you know, one of the great reasons why I made the culture wellness culture starters and why it's so important to, you know, have your coconut yogurt and your kiffers and make sure that you're eating fermented foods on a daily basis to be able to change the environment in your gut. So it's not about taking probiotics. They're not going to change the pH in your gut. They're not going to, you know, action the change that you need to make. So fermented foods is a really, really big one to make sure that you're making the change. The other thing um, as we go through is to understand and to know that there is some incredible research out there with regards to the ketogenic diet and how it supports the production of GABA. Now, when we work with our clients on the Culture Wellness Optimal Gut Healing Program, the first thing that we do for people that have got mental health issues, they're struggling with anxiety and depression, is we make sure that they utilize and get on a very, very holistic ketogenic diet that factors in all of the different um, whole foods and it's not, you know, shakes and, um, you know, cheese and bacon and all the stuff that seems to be happening at the moment with the ketogenic diet. So with the production of GABA, the production of short chain fatty acids, the turning off that inflammatory response in the gut and certainly turning off the inflammatory response in the brain, so if you are a top-down person, then the ketogenic diet is going to be very important to flip the switch off in your brain and get your nervous system to settle down. So we know the ketogenic diet is really important. And we also can measure and test these things. And so that's what we do at Cultured Wellness as well. So we test, don't guess. So we can test. Are you making any dopamine? We can test, uh, you know, what's going on in your gut microbiome. Is it out of balance? Is it dysbiotic? And do we need to make some changes? So we can test all these things and we can, you know, plan an action and a treatment plan. So there is lots and lots and lots that can be done that I really can't wait to talk to you about in the following lives. So there's so much more to unpack and for me to share. And just to recap, so for those of you who are watching in the Facebook group, so I know there's lots of people watching out on the YouTube channel, but for those watching in Facebook group, could you please um, make sure that you get familiar with those guides so you can have a look at the products that I recommend, so the fermented foods that I recommend, um, you know, I can talk about even the jars that I recommend for fermenting. That's all in the guide. There's some beautiful testimonies in there of people that have had significant panic attacks, anxiety, mental health issues, and what they did to turn that around. And it's really lovely to hear inspiring stories about people that have been able to make change and 
to get back to feeling really balanced. So there's lovely testimonies in there. And if you are in the Facebook group, all the live replays will be there. Alrighty, so I'm just going to go back and make sure that I have covered everyone off. Um, oh, Jane, that is such a great question. What role does the vagus nerve play in the last diagram? So let me just get that back up again because I love the vagus nerve. Anything to do with the vagus nerve is wonderful. So with the vagus nerve, so the vagus nerve sort of sits aside to the autonomic nervous system. So we know that um, in some research, we've seen that if the vagus nerve is severed, which is horrible and you don't want that to happen, but if the vagus nerve has been severed, it can the autonomic nervous system can still work separately to that. So the vagus nerve does work separately. And the vagus nerve is called the wandering nerve. And it's the biggest nerve throughout our body that wanders through so many different organs and different parts of our body. And it senses if there's a state of alarm in the gut or in the body and sends the appropriate signals back to the brain. So in this diagram here, it's showing that it sits separately to the enteric nervous system and the autonomic nervous system. So the parasympathetic and the sympathetic nervous system. And it's driving that biodirectional, so up and down pathway of sending the appropriate signals. Now, this is the cool stuff that I get to, you know, share with you guys because the vagus nerve can get stuck and it can think that it's constant, the body's constantly under threat and it can think that there is going to be a stress response at any moment in time. And we can actively turn that vagus nerve response off and we can create what's called more vagal tone. And when there's more vagal tone in the body, the stress response in the body is so much better. So we can sing, we can gargle, we can do cool stuff like mammalian dives and dump our face in some cold water immersion. There's so many cool things that we can do to be able to support that vagus nerve and stimulate it and create tone so then our brain can, uh, our vagus nerve can send the appropriate signals instead of stress, 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 because we can get stuck in that stress response. Okay, so Angela, that is such a great question about the difference between prebiotics and probiotics. So I'll go into it, this in a little bit more detail in the next, um, next lives, but prebiotics are basically fibers and resistant starches that feed the gut microbes so they can then multiply and create the short chain fatty acids and all those wonderful metabolites. And then also the probiotics are the actual bacteria that we consume in fermented foods or in um, probiotic capsules or powders that go into our gut. So the probiotics are the bacteria, the prebiotics are the starches and fibers that feed that bacteria. So I hope that makes sense. Okay. Um, just going back to make sure that I've covered everything off here. Okay. So there's another question here. How do we get our gut tested? Would you recommend it for certain circumstances or for everyone? That's such a great question. So I recommend that everybody has their gut tested. So if it was, if it was my, um, you know, if I had my way, gut microbiome testing would be on, if there are Australians who are listening, it would be part of our Medicare system and everyone would have their gut tested um, at least once a year because it tells us so much about what's going on in our body, our immune system, what's happening in our brain, and everyone should get their gut tested. Now, you can get your gut tested through Cultured Wellness. We use the Microba test uh, labs, and they use a metagenomic testing. And it's an incredible testing that looks at everything that's going on in your gut, and it looks at are we creating short chain fatty acids 
And we can actually see in that gut test, in the microbe test, are we making GABA? Are we consuming GABA? We can see if we're making short chain fatty acids like butyrate. We can see if we are creating and making um, you know, vitamins and nutrients. We can see if we've got those neurotransmitters or if we've got inflammation. So we organize the testing for you at Cultured Wellness. And then we can also organize for you to have a consult as part of that testing to go through the results and then action a treatment plan. So um, yes, you can get your gut tested through Cultured Wellness and I would absolutely recommend it for everybody. It's um, once, once you know what's going on, it makes a huge, huge difference. I'm just gonna go back through here um, and make sure that I've answered all your questions, which I think I have. Okay, um, so some, I can't see your name, unfortunately. Um, so someone's 29 and has been diagnosed with stomach ulcers. I'm sorry to hear that. Um, and with an undetermined cause, would the program be a good tool to go about healing? Oh, absolutely. So the first thing is we need to find out what the cause is. So often stomach acid, uh, sorry, stomach ulcers, um, some of the things that we see with our patients is H. pylori. And so you want to be able to do a microba test and um, the appropriate gut testing to find out who's causing the trouble because you want to know what the problem is so you can action a treatment plan to fix it. So yes, we would find out what the underlying cause is and then our program, so the Optimal Gut Healing Program is completely designed to rebalance your gut, to be able to clear out any of those pathogens, to create a new gut microbiome that is making all of these short chain fatty acids and making all these wonderful things so you can find balance. So um, I hope that helps. Uh, so Louise, the microba test is a stool analysis. And so you collect a stool sample. The test is delivered directly to your door. And so you don't have to go to a doctor or you don't have to do anything. We organize the test for you, go straight to your door. Then it's actually, thankfully, you know, things have progressed somewhat. So it's not, you know, a big tub of um, collecting a big tub of stool and posting it away. It actually has, it's really cool. It's a little brush. You brush a bit of stool onto it, you put it back into the little cylinder and then you post it straight back to them. And then they put, they give us your results and then we go through. We do do a lot of blood testing for our patients to make sure that we know what's going on with their bodies. Um, but yes, um, it's a stool analysis. Okay. I found the tab, but only testimonials there and images, but no PDF guides. Uh, so, Debbie, the PDF guides for these uh, these beautiful little images that I've been showing tonight, we, don't, we haven't made them. It's just that people have been asking tonight for them. So we'll do our best to make them in the next couple of days and then we'll put them up there. But the guides is where we're going to be putting everything in over the next 10 days. So keep a watch out for them. Alrighty, so is gut testing only required once or should it be repeated periodically? Yes, I think it should be repeated. Um, we all have stress responses. We all catch a bug. We all age. We all, you know, our bodies change. And so it's really important to monitor. So I get my gut tested twice a year. I monitor it. I get my bloods tested sort of every three to six months and I monitor it. And it is incredible. It makes um, a huge difference to know where my body's at and what, and what I need to do. Um, now, the next, next question here is, my 10-year-old son has a serious eczema. Would it be related to his gut? Does the stool test help? So absolutely, it will be related to his gut. So um, the literature is very, very clear that a dysbiotic gut, which means there's a gut out of balance, is going to cause a big response through the skin. And so there are all sorts of different gut microbes that can cause that. For example, 
um, Staphylococcus, strep Streptococcus, a lot of parasite and worms can cause a lot of eczema as well. So we can talk, um, so we can go through, find out what's causing the problem. And then the other issues with regards to eczema is that um, we need to make sure that we can open up the detoxification pathways because our skin is a major detoxification pathway. But we want to be clearing out those toxins and detoxing out through our stool, through our urine, through our sweat and not out through our skin. So there's lots that can be done. And um, yeah, we we look after families and people with eczema every day, all day. And we just, you know, it's wonderful to see people's um, skin turn around and just be so silky smooth and have no issues. Um, okay, so someone said here, are you sending tests abroad? So we work with patients all over the world if you're dialing in from New Zealand, um, Microba post to New Zealand. And if you are in any other country, then we can support you. So you can email info at culturedwellness.com and we can support you with whichever country you're in and what test it, what company you need to use so we can organise the testing for you. So uh, if you're not in New Zealand, um, then just reach out so we can let you know. Okay. Um, there's a question there about what blood, blood test do you recommend? So that's very hard for me to say because everybody's different. But we certainly love and considering the immune environment at the moment and everyone wants to look after their health, their immune health. We all want to stay really robust at the moment and resilient. So we absolutely look at vitamin D, we look at zinc, we look at folate, we look at copper, we make sure we do um, liver count, thyroid, we look at inflammatory markers, we look at um, a complete biochemistry. So there's lots and lots of bloods that we run for our patients and um, it just depends on what's going on for them. So it's a bit hard for me to answer that question. Um, okay. So there's another question there about, do you suggest going to the doctor for these blood tests or can um, the culture wellness, or can, yeah, the culture wellness naturopath organize this? Um, oh, yes, so we can organize testing for you or you can, um, pr preferably we like to see you first and then we like to be able to um, tell you the bloods that we know that you would need Sometimes you can go off to your doctor to organise that or if you're remote or you don't have a doctor that you can work with, then we have a um, online, well, it's not online, you still need to go in and get your blood done, but we have a eye medical lab that we use so you can get the, all of the testing done through us. Um, and so it's very, you know, important if you want to go down that testing and so forth that, um, yeah, we look at what's going on for you what program do you need to do and so forth. Okay. Oh, I'm so, so glad. Someone's just said that many dots were connected. Perfect. That was my game, my, you know, end game. That was my goal tonight for lots of dots to be connected, lots of penny drops for people to have aha moments of like, wow, it was when I had a car accident or I was in a stressful situation or I got, you know, barley belly or got a parasite in Morocco and now suddenly I'm anxious and I've been medicated for this or I'm anxious and I don't know what to do next. I really, really hope that you guys have been able to put those um, pieces of the puzzle together because, you know, that's the first step in making change and getting back to feeling resilient and turning it all around. Okay, so I will see you guys next on Thursday night. Please ask lots of questions if you're in the Facebook group. We will be sending an out an email tonight, so check your emails. There'll be information about microba testing. There'll be information about the Cultured Wellness Optimal Gut Health Program if you are interested in working with us. We have um, really understood that there's a significant, significant issue going on for people at the moment. 
And so for our Optimal Gut Health program that many of you may know, um, we have actually introduced community circles this for this intake for our Optimal Gut Health program. We have never done it before, but I just feel that everyone out there at the moment, considering what's happening, we need to be together as a community like we've got tonight. We need to learn as a community and introducing these community circles means that I can work with, you know, with you all and I can help guide you through and drop in on, you know, your learning and your consults and be there to support you and provide this kind of educa education and that we can share our journey and experiences. Now, we know in the research that it's a little bit scary and daunting and quite overwhelming for people that struggle with mental health to be in community groups and to share. But we also know in the research that that is where the biggest change happens. So um, there will be in that email a link for you to have a look at how we have changed up the Optimal Gut Health program to introduce community circles, which is really exciting. I'm so excited and um, how we can best support you to get the testing and to know what to eat and all of those kinds of things. So if the penny's already dropped for you guys and you want to work with culture wellness, we ask, you know, we will have an intake and, um, you know, we will have a small intake getting started. But for those of you, you know, just keep learning, keep listening. I'm going to teach you so much more in the next couple of lives. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much. And I will see you all in some more lives. I'll see you on Thursday and um, I will catch you really soon. But thank you so much for joining me. See you, everyone. Bye.